Hi everybody and welcome back to Dauntless TV, I'm Marcus and today I have two new MacBooks that just came out, both of which have the M1 Max chips but they vary in different ways. The 14 inch version has the M1 Max with 64 gigs of unified memory and 2 terabytes of SSD space. On the other hand, the 16 inch has the same M1 Max chip but with 32 gigs of unified memory and 1 terabyte of SSD space. Now we'll be putting both MacBooks against each other to see whether or not one is better than the other. The main big difference for me and why I wanted to make this video is because I bought a 14 inch first because I thought that I like the smallest form factor and I maxed it out just because I wanted to see whether or not the 14 inch could handle the maximum amount of configuration you can give it. And then I bought a 16 inch after I bought a 14 inch because uh, I went to the Apple store and I checked out the 16 inch and I realized like the screen is so beautiful, it's so big and videos look so immersive. I could see details in the videos that I can't really see in the 14 inch uh, when I'm editing. Because of the bigger screen, you can fit more timeline into your workspace and that is something that I thought I didn't value but I realized I did. So at the end of this video, I want to be able to share my experience and I'm going to tell you which MacBook I'm going to return and which I'm going to keep and it's based on these tests that I've done. The results really blown me away. It's I did not expect the results at all. I thought one MacBook would have been definitely better than the other but it, the results surprised me. Also because I've watched reviews online and I saw comparisons and my comparisons seem to be a bit different from theirs. So I did the tests many times to make sure that they were consistent. My results were a bit shocking. So uh, stay tuned and I hope that you enjoy this video and let's get into it. The first test is the DaVinci Resolve test where the timeline had 4.6k B-roll files. For the first test, the 16 inch got 7 minutes and 42 seconds. The 14 inch, which has 64 gigabytes of unified memory, actually scored one minute slower. And I was kind of surprised because most reviewers said that the difference between the 14 inch and 16 inch for M1 Max is non-existent. But from my results, it seems that there's a significant difference. So that's why I tested it again. For the second test, the results were actually the same. The 14 inch scored one minute slower than the 16 inch. These results had render cache off, meaning that none of them had the advantage of having cached the video in the memory. And secondly, the second test was done one day later and I restarted the MacBooks and cleared all the programs before I ran the test. Now let's move on to the second test. This time I had H.264 footage in my timeline. So here are the results. The same thing happened. The 16 inch scored almost 30 seconds faster than the 14 inch and I did the same test on another day. Therefore I can say the difference seems to be systematic and it's not a random occurrence. But I don't really know where these results are coming from and what's causing them. So here's the final DaVinci Resolve test. This time I mixed 4.6k B-RAW H.264 files and H.265 files shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro and GoPros. And here are the results. So this time it seems that the 16 inch and 14 inch are much closer than the previous test and this is the result that I was expecting at first. So I can't really say why the first two tests turned out the way it did but for this test, it seems that there isn't much of a difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch. But a good thing to note is that the 14 inch did run a lot louder with the fans ramping up a lot quicker and faster. The 14 inch also got much hotter than the 16 inch. One theory I have is that the 14 inch seems to be doing worse at longer rendering times meaning that maybe the thermals inside the 14 inch is throttling the performance for longer render times. Because this is a shorter 2 minute render time, the fans and the thermals didn't hit a very high ceiling. Therefore, 
the 14 inch did not have to throttle. Well, this is only speculation and I can't confirm this, but this is just my hypothesis. Now, let's take a look at Blender. For this Blender test, I rendered in Psycho's render engine 250 samples, 1080p, and 32 pixel tile size. The 16 inch and 14 inch seems to be neck and neck. The one second deviation seems to be pretty negligible in real world scenarios. Because Blender is CPU bound, the GPUs of the M1 Max wasn't heavily used. Therefore, my hypothesis earlier could be the result of GPU throttling rather than CPU throttling. So I did a few more Blender tests and here are the results. As you can see, the 14 inch and 16 inch did not have much of a difference. This closely resembles what other reviewers had gotten. So the total time I took to run all these tests was around 2 hours and here is the battery life I had after. So the 16 inch was at 65% and the 14 inch was at 52%. Now this aligns with other reviewers where they say that the 16 inch could last around 6 hours of editing or heavy usage and this is what I got. So if you want the longest battery life, go for the 16 inch. But if you want the longest battery life out of all the Macs, go for the 16 inch with the M1 Pro. The 14 inch with the M1 Max would have the lowest battery life out of every configuration of the Macs. Alright, so at the end of the day, after looking at these benchmarks and the performance and thermals and usability, portability and all the factors of these two devices as a video creator and as a creative professional, which one ultimately would do I choose in the end? And to me the answer was very simple. Based on the benchmarks and my user experience, I think for most creative professionals, the 16 inch would be a better bet. If you're okay with the heavier weight. I don't think the weight is an issue at all, but if that is really the one thing that you hate, then maybe go for the 14 inch. But for everything else, I think the 16 inch is just better. The screen is so much bigger and you can do so much more with the screen. The Apple XDR display that they have put in the MacBook is so good that I think it's really worth it just to get the bigger screen, especially if that's your main monitor that you use for all your work. And secondly, it's because of the battery life. The battery life on the 16 inch is markedly better than the 14 inch but the 14 inch isn't a slouch in that department also. The third thing is the benchmarks between these two aren't actually very far and for some of them the 16 inch actually beat the 14 inch in quite a massive way even though the 16 inch had lesser unified memory and lesser SSD so it was quite surprising. Furthermore the thermals on the 16 inch are very very good. You can hear definitely the fan noise kick in for the 14 inch very quickly if you're doing rendering. But for the 16 inch, well, most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, it will be just dead quiet. If the fans needed to be kicked in, it's very, very slow. That is more like a very silent hum. So, at the end of the day, is the extra 32GB of unified memory worth it in the end? I would say no for most people. And for my workflow, which is actually pretty intense in terms of video rendering, photo editing work, 3D rendering, all these applications that I use are very intensive on the memory, but yet the 32 gig of memory seems to be enough for my, my users. And if that's the case, I think for majority of people, the 32 gigs would probably be enough. But if you want to get a 64, just in case, maybe you're doing some use cases that really need the 64 GB of unified memory, Go for it if you got the money to spend. But if I were to take the money away from using it for the RAM, I will use it for the SSD instead. I think having more space, especially because this SSD is so fast internally, is more worth it than upgrading the RAM. And that's my advice for most people. So if you are choosing between these two models, uh, the 14 inch or the 16 inch, I hope this video has answered it for you. Thanks for watching. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. Now I'll see you next time. Bye bye.